What's up, guys? Uh, yeah, an obvious setup difference. I'm home uh, for Thanksgiving break, and I'm filming in my room again. So yeah, this is pretty great to be back back here. As the title suggests, this video will be um, an explanation on why I believe I'm a terrible vegan. There are many ways that I myself, uh, I feel that I'm not an adequate vegan. Uh, there are statements that I make and beliefs that I hold which seemingly contradict, contradict uh, my my ethical system, and no doubt if fellow vegans heard me voice these opinions, uh, such as me, I don't believe that murder should be applied to animals, uh, that's one belief that I hold, uh, I think that it convolutes the um, the definition of murder. If fellow vegans were to hear me, you know, making these statements, uh, they would probably question my being a vegan. So these are reasons or, or ways in which I am a pretty terrible vegan. Uh, so let's get into the video. So the first reason why I am a terrible vegan is I get flu shots. I get my annual flu shot at the nearest CVS, uh, which is pretty close to my university. I always get my flu shot when I'm at my university, and I'm there almost year-round. I have a really good job uh, on campus, so I, I pretty much live there. I know that there are vegan flu shots offered. I believe it's called flu block, flu block and it is offered at Target and uh, Walgreens locations. However, there are no Target or Walgreens locations near my university, and therefore I just get, I, out of convenience, I just get it at the CVS, which is not vegan. It is made with chicken eggs, uh, fertilized chicken eggs, and that is therefore not vegan. Now, do keep in mind that, you know, viruses like the influenza virus, uh, they only infect animal cells, so the vaccines have to be made with animal products via a fertilized chicken egg or, you know, cultured cells. Now, a very incredibly simplistic way that most flu vaccines work is that the vaccine is propagated and uh, replicated inside of either the, the chicken egg or the cultured animal cells, and then the antigen is isolated, and that's where we get the vaccine. That's where, that's the part that we release into the, into the body so that our immune system can, you know, detect it as a foreign substance and gain immunity from it. Uh, however, with flu block, it is used through cultured animal cells rather than fertilized chicken egg. So it's, it's more ethical. It's, you know, a vegan, quote-unquote, uh, alternative to regular flu vaccines. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description if you want to read more information on flu block. If you are a vegan who is interested in vegan, quote-unquote, vegan vaccines. The second way in which I'm a pretty bad vegan is that I will occasionally assist uh, friends and family in cooking and preparing non-vegan foods. I just cannot bring myself to assist with meat or like flesh, like a carcass or meat products. So I really only assist with like mashed potatoes, for example. I do this as a way to uh, abide by my morals, quote unquote. I'm not consuming or condoning the animal products, but I'm not going to isolate myself from my friends and family and the people that I love in the name of my ethics. I'm not ever going to isolate myself completely from society in a way to uh, adhere strictly to my ethics. And yeah, I mean, in this sense, I am a pretty terrible vegan. Uh, probably if I were a better vegan, I would just um, say, no, I'm not going to help or I'm not going to get involved at all in, um, it, with any animal products in any context. But I don't do that. Um, I just do not want to separate myself from my family. So in that sense, I'm a pretty bad vegan. I'm also a bad vegan because I purchase products which may contain milk or eggs. Uh, the way that I look at this issue is that if a product uh, does not actually contain milk or eggs, you're not uh, producing some kind of negative value in regard to animal suffering. Uh, you're not increasing demand in animal products. You're not uh, somehow causing more suffering by purchasing a product which may contain milk or eggs. I think vegans who do this um, are largely just overzealous, and I think this this entire uh, concern with micro ingredients which may possibly uh, be animal derived, um, I think it's largely just um, a statement about the person and not so much about the practicality of whether or not it has milk or eggs. I mean, it doesn't matter if it has milk or eggs, uh, so I really don't worry about those products. Like Oreos, I do eat Oreos because Oreos, you know, there is a chance of cross-contamination. Once again, it doesn't increase suffering. I don't care. Obviously, some of the more deontological vegans, like Gary Francione, uh, they are, you know, vehemently opposed to eating french fries that were cooked in oils, which were also used to cook pork rinds. You know, they would strictly, you know, oppose that kind of behavior um, because they believe it somehow increases suffering. Uh, it doesn't, hint, hint. Um, it, it really doesn't at all, even if there are, you know, micro-ingredients of, you know, pork fats in your french fries, 
doesn't matter. Uh, so, you know, I'm a consequentialist. Um, I'll talk about that later, how this, how my being a consequentialist vegan uh, makes me a bad vegan sometimes. Now, the fourth way in which I am a terrible vegan is that I still possess some animal products even uh, before I became vegan. So I still have my leather wallet. I've had my wallet for eight years, and I've only been vegan for about two to three years. So I still have my leather wallet. It's great, and uh, it's still durable. It's fine. Uh, it's in perfect condition, and I'm not going to get rid of it. There's no reason to do that and to force myself to pay more money, and I don't have much money to begin with because I'm a college student. So, no, I'm going to keep my wallet in its leather, whatever, um, and uh, I also have a leather jacket in my closet. I will be getting the leather jacket up because I now have another jacket, which is, you know, better at keeping me warm, so there's no need to keep my leather jacket. So I'm not going to be selling it, obviously, but I will uh, probably give it to the Goodwill or just give it to maybe my roommate or somebody who needs it. So, yeah, um, I do have my leather wallet. I have my leather jacket, uh, some of my shoes have leather, and uh, I don't think that my... I have gotten new boots since going vegan, so my boots are synthetic leather. If some person were to find my Instagram account and see that I had a picture of my leather jacket, for example, they might think, oh, you know, you're a bad vegan because you're encouraging suffering or you're excusing, um, you know, the exploitation of animals or whatever. Um, however, I'm just being practical. Um, there's no need necessarily to replace some of these products. They still are, they last many, many years. Obviously, I will never buy leather again, but um, the point is, is that there's no need to replace it, right? So be reasonable. Um, but this, of course, makes me a bad vegan to a lot of people. The fifth way in which I'm a pretty terrible vegan is I am actually pro having pets. Um, I'm vehemently opposed to breeding, animal breeding. I think it's uh, absolutely unethical. Um, I think that we should end it. Um, however, with adopting animals which need homes, there are hundreds of thousands of cats and dogs being euthanized every day um, because, you know, nobody will give them homes. I think that it's almost an obligation, a moral obligation for vegans to take these animals in if they can. You know, if they can't have pets, then don't have them, you know. But if you can, then I think that you, in some sense, should have some responsibility to take these animals in. Once again, the more dogmatic, uh, deontological vegans, a lot of them are, you know, strictly opposed to pets. Uh, they think that, you know, the concept of ownership is unethical. Um, once again, I'm a consequentialist. It, the, you know, whether or not you own an animal um, or, or whether or not it's ethical is irrelevant if the animal, you know, doesn't have a concept of ownership. Uh, animals don't have concepts of ownership or exploitation. Uh, all they care about is that they're happy and healthy. And whether or not you own it on a sheet of paper, not something that it would conceptualize or understand. The sixth way in which I am a pretty terrible vegan is that I do not and will not excuse bad behavior in the name of veganism. Uh, there are many different vegans on the platform, on this platform, and other platforms who promote lies, delusion, slander, and pseudoscience all in the name of veganism. And I'm not going to excuse their behavior because they're vegan. I find it almost odd and perhaps even cult-like when vegans, you know, they really get infuriated when you criticize other vegans or even suggest that they've made a mistake or that they should correct uh, their wrong, that they should right their wrong. Like, it's, it's so startling when you criticize someone, or not even criticize, but just critique them objectively, and you get backlash for that. It's so, it's just so cult-like. Like, it doesn't matter if you are a vegan, you are fallible. And there are things that you're going, that you will do as a human, and it's perfectly within our rights to, you know, to publicly even announce that what you did was wrong, and to uh, maybe a request that you acknowledge that what you said or what you did was wrong. And vegans should be perfectly okay with admitting when they're wrong, right? As a consumer of YouTube videos, I find that I am much more able to respect uh, a content creator when they admit that they were wrong about something. It's when vegans are not, or just anyone in general, uh, when they don't want to admit that they're wrong. That's when I lose all of my respect for that person in particular. Uh, so yeah, this makes me a bad vegan, the fact that I am quick to uh, call out vegans when I think they're wrong, and I will not excuse their behavior because they're vegan. The seventh and most egregious reason why I am a bad vegan, uh, and a lot of you will probably be triggered by this, is that I don't actually care about vegan for veganism's sake. Let me explain what I mean. The reason why I decided to uh, go vegan and why I have remained vegan is because veganism is a reasonable way to reduce suffering and to maximize utility. I would possibly identify as both a utilitarian 
and a vegan. A lot of you might be questioning how I could possibly be a utilitarian and a vegan, uh, because there are many ways in which veganism uh, doesn't allow or doesn't permit for uh, the maximizing of utility if it uh, requires an animal's suffering. I'm also concerned with the consequences of actions, not actions in and of themselves. And just extend that to veganism. I'm a consequentialist vegan, but I'm not actually concerned with veganism in and of itself. I'm not a vegan for vegan's sake. I'm a vegan because it, like I said, is a good way to reduce suffering and to maximize utility. And the great paradox uh, of being a consequentialist vegan is that you must realize that uh, sometimes non-vegan actions might actually yield greater consequences. The most common example being um, animals for experimentation on medications which could go on to save millions of humans' lives. It's comments like these, by the way, which make people think that I'm not a vegan, or that uh, people like Unnatural Vegan, you know, she's made comments about uh, it being, you know, hypothetically um, ethical for a person to eat the rejected eggs of backyard hens. Not a vegan practice, it's not a vegan thing to do, but it's still, it's ethical and it, it, it's irrelevant, right? It doesn't increase suffering to eat those eggs. So as a consequentialist vegan, there, this is something that, you know, it, it's like a paradox being a consequentialist vegan or even being a utilitarian vegan. And it's situations like these and statements like these that make people think, well, you're not a vegan or you're really not concerned with animals at all. So uh, yeah, those are uh, seven ways in which I'm a pretty terrible vegan. Uh, some of you might watch this video and then conclude I'm not a vegan. Uh, so I am a vegan and I just want to reiterate that. And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks guys for watching. Alrighty guys, well thank you so much. I did undergo another massive rebranding, I know. Um, I am now called The Lay Vegan. Uh, I will make a video explaining why this is the name I have chosen. I figured I had to get my name settled before I do my first collaboration. Uh, there is a collaboration coming up soon with Leslie of Nerds and Nutrition, and it will be on uh, reasons that you should go vegan if you are not a vegan, or if you are already vegan then there are reasons why you should stay vegan. And I have a possible collab coming up with another YouTuber soon. So uh, yeah, my, there's going to be some you know videos I'm planning to release. And I also have another video coming up on, um, I forgot what it's about. I think it's on how to change non-vegans' minds. So if you want to see that video, you know, let me, let me know down below. Thanks guys for watching. Peace.